On this week's episode of One Up Me, apparently loot boxes are quite ethical. Enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to One Up Me, episode 63, actually. I forgot what is going on out there. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Tuesday, yeah, that's when this comes out. Tuesday. That's right. Um, my name is Ryan Smith, and I am joined, as always, by Jordan Sims to talk about the wonderful world of video games. What's up? What's up? How's uh, everyone doing today? How you doing? How are you doing? I, I'm doing pretty well. I had to ship back a shirt, and this company was like, "Listen, man, it's past thirty days. We're not gonna. We'll, we'll do it for you. But we're not gonna do it again." And I was like, "Okay, thanks." Uh, now I've been noticing lately. Okay. You've been wearing a lot of t-shirts, and as long as I've known you, you're not really a t-shirt guy. What's going on there? I don't know. I think it's just uh, just trying something new. I have a lot of clothes. T-shirts are better, okay? I don't know about that. Are I you? know you like the button-ups and everything, but no, no, no. I mean, what do you do? It's hot. It's hot. Why, why, are you, why are you wearing a button-up? I'm just more comfortable in a button-up, man. I mean, I guess, but also, man, you know, you got one of those graphic tees, baby. You know, you got to... Hot Topic needs to stay, needs to stay afloat. You it's get, not my job to keep Hot Topic in business. You got to get those uh, Rick and Morty t-shirts. I mean, even though I, I do go on Hot Topic every once in a while and look at their pop exclusive Only, only if they're less than $5 a piece. So. That's true. <laughs> That's I still true. need to get rid of. I got that new Siri pop, uh, the E3 exclusive. It looks really cool. kind of want to get rid of all my pops that aren't exclusive. I have a cat dog one. And I have uh, the Siri one. I have Golden Frieza. Uh, I have uh, Go- God Goku. Okay. And I have uh, dang. Uh, there's one more. Oh, I have the Crystal Meth Blue Heisenberg. That one is cool. And all, all those are awesome. But I also have like a Thomas Wayne Batman one. I think I gave that one away. I have a Titan uh, from Attack on Titan that I don't really like. I'm probably gonna give that away. But yeah, I kind of I've, I've made I've made a decision. Well, I made a decision a while back that I only buy a pop if I find it in the wild. I don't want to go online and buy them. Um, but now I think I've made a decision that almost every one of my pops is going to be like an exclusive. Otherwise, it's not special. Because I mean, pops most pops aren't special because they make I don't remember, there was something a metric crap ton of like them. they make so many. Uh, yeah. our, one of our local local hobby shops. Uh, he has just a wall of pops that he's selling, and there's so much. Why is this? What, what is this? Why is this pop? What, what are you doing? Yeah, there's literally a pop for everything. Why is there a Gangnam style pop or whatever? You know, a dabbing donkey from Shrek. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. Why is that a thing? You know what I, I mean? I don't know. This uh, makes them less special. Um, I understand they're cheap. They're pretty cheap. I mean, you know, you can get like a super nice figure for hundreds of dollars of those. What are they called the Nindroids? And yeah, the, Nindroids. It's like the size of an Oreo cookie. Yeah, and those are a lot of those are uh, really nice. Um, but they're like forty dollars on the cheap end, and they go up to like I think over a hundred dollars yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And that's new. That's like that's at a big box store or online. That's not from a secondary seller. And they're so small. Like they look cute. They don't take up a lot of footprint, but but they're so they're, they're so expensive. There's a lot of uh, really like if you're in the anime. Oh yeah. There's a lot of anime ones. Um. I think there's maybe some uh, me and a friend looked at it, like look at the website one day and it goes pretty deep. There's uh, Steins Gate. If any of you have ever heard of that, it's one of my favorite anime. Anime, animes. I think it's just anime. It's just anime. The plural of anime is anime. Yeah, like deers, right? The plural of deers yeah. is deers. Yeah, that's weird. Um, the, uh, I think they have Hunter Hunter. That's a lot of cool ones. If if any of you want like a nice little figure or just you know want to see how they look, I also have Overwatch and I think they have a few superheroes and. Yeah, but if I want to get a superhero figure, I want to get like a you know like a nice like exactly six inch figure. There's only one figure. Well, there's a couple. There's like two or three Raven figures I have that are only like a hundred dollars a piece. Or correction, there's a couple of Raven figures that I don't own that are a hundred dollars a piece that I would like. But you were just flexing on me. No, uh, but I have all the. Sorry, that was me hitting my glass of Wawa. That's rude. I know. Sorry, listeners. Uh, but there's one. Uh, if you are out there and you collect figures and stuff, there's this company called Slideshow, or maybe yes, 
Yeah. Uh, sideshow. Yeah, sideshow. I always call it slideshow. If but... any of you ever watch, uh, what's his name? Variant Comics uh, on YouTube. He talks about. He does like reviews of their pictures yeah. sometimes. So there's this one that I want. One of my favorite characters is Scar, the son of Hulk that he has during Planet Hulk. There's a whole. You can just Google. Does he had that with She Hulk. No, that's his. <laughs> I know. Just... Oh, that's creepy. That his aunt, his cousin, cousin, cousin. Right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he has a son called Scar, and he, you know, does a bunch of cool stuff, fights dinosaurs, etc. Anyway, so there's this figure of him, and they only made, I think, 200, oh. maybe, maybe 500. I don't know. They made less than 1,000 of them, and so... 999? I think it was, like, less than... 1,000? Probably. Not a lot. You said they made 999. Oh, we lied. We, we lied. made thousands of those. Yeah, uh, but... I wasn't able to get one when they originally released for, you know, around $300. So now the easiest way for me to get one is on eBay, and they're sitting at like 500 right now. And you said there were Raven ones for 100 Oh, yeah, Raven Are doesn't have... Are those Sideshow? Because that's really no, cheap no, for they're, Sideshow. They're just some random company. I don't know, but yeah. Raven is popular enough that yeah. she has have tons. Have you seen the... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sure she has way more than Scar. Yeah. Um, have you seen the uh, the Japanese like superhero? Yes. That's, I don't like those. I like them. I know. A lot of people do. I don't like, like all really, of them. Really, <clears throat> the Batman one was cool and the Star Wars ones. You, know, you, you guys may know I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. Even though I don't like Star Wars that much, though, there's some pretty cool... Uh, I think they might be made by Square Enix. I'm yeah, not it's, sure. it's Square Enix and another company. Yeah, they kind of do collaboration they, yeah. type deal. There's but, uh, there's a Green Lantern one that looks really okay. cool. I don't. The Flash is my favorite superhero though, and I really hate the way the Flash looks. He looks very animal like. Yeah, he's, he's very sharp edge, and yeah. I don't. The Flash is like sleek, you know, and yeah. I don't. I don't like. I don't know. He's got like lightning sticking out everywhere, and I mean. Maybe I'm alone on this. I just don't really like no, it. No, I don't think you're. I've met I've met people that don't enjoy that particular style of action figure. But I do. I'm kind of in the same boat as you that I'm going to start, or I would like to start getting those high end figures instead of having pops. Because the if other you, day, sorry, go ahead. If you looked at my Twitter before I did the move, I had like a bunch of pops, and it was kind of disgusting in my opinion. Oh, it was. I mean, you have a lot now. I do, but some I, people have. Many more, like a, a mental illness. It or is something. terrible, and I uh, get it. They're gonna add pop uh, addiction to the uh, international mental health thing, like you know, they added video game addiction. Exactly. I mean, there was somebody that came into the shop the other day, and she bought three of the exact same Suicide Squad Joker. Oh my god! Is she gonna burn them? I don't know. I if, she, if now they, if, she, they, if she puts them on one of those. Uh, Mouse that shoots things for you to, you know. Oh, a skeet the, shooter? Yeah, a skeet shooter. Yeah. That would be pretty good. I know what that is. Cause I, I remembered what that was because they had one at Goodwill for some reason. Wow. That's yeah, weird. It was weird. That That's, I hate that movie so much. But uh, the other day, uh, we were at the uh, hobby shop we were talking about recently. Um, and they had a, uh, what's his name? Jerry, Scary Jerry. Yeah, Scary Jerry Pop. Uh, I showed Jordan and I was. I honestly thought he was gonna buy it. <laughs> I do like Scary Terry. He's my one of my favorite Rick and Morty uh, characters. I do have two Rick and Morty pops. Uh, they're exclusives, though. Oh, okay. They're they're the Western Rick and Morty pops from uh, like the Citadel episode where they're just background, just background characters. characters. They're background versions of Rick and Morty, but it's just them wearing cowboy hats, and mm, mm. so it's just them as pops. And I picked them up for I think like. Five dollars a piece or something like that's really cheap. Yeah, I find weird deals on pops, and I'm kind of like a grandmother in that fact that I like deals, and so I just I swear you're like a grandmother in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You been playing anything this week though? I see you got several games on your list. So, you know, we keep telling y'all if you follow us on Twitter, you get behind the scenes in our lives because I honestly probably post more of my life on Twitter than I do any other yeah, social media. A lot. I do tweet a lot. Uh, I probably post. I tell my family, I'm like, listen, if you want to know what's going on in my life, just either listen to the podcast or follow me on Twitter, and then you can actually know. They don't know. do either. They, I, they, no, they don't. Uh, I, I think my nephew might listen to this, so hi, if you're listening to this. But anyway, uh, I did purchase a GameCube this week, which seems like months and months ago. But what? Yeah. What is, how does time work for you? I don't know, man. 
That are you some kind of higher being that receives <laughs> time differently than other? No, it just feels like it's been a month it since I bought like, that GameCube. It, it feels like it's been a week. Yeah, it feels like it's been, been a month. A week. It feels like it's been a month for me. Uh, well, it might have been a little more than a week because you bought Godzilla and then Godzilla destroyed all. Wait, what's it called? Godzilla, uh, King of All Monsters. So that fighting game for yeah, the GameCube didn't work, and then it didn't work. Rip, rip. Um, that sucks. I'm gonna have to buy it off of eBay or something. Cause, yeah, cause you gotta I figure out what game you're gonna get. I know. Apparently, that credit didn't expire either. So well, I mean, it makes sense. Imagine if you went to Walmart and you bought a uh, a gift card and you and then you brought it, you found it like a year later. Oh, sorry, that gift card expired. True. Yeah. What, so I what? What do you mean? I gave. So I just gave you a hundred dollars for nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Shut up, bird. We're podcasting. So. But you do have a game on here that you work that you did purchase from a game exchange. Apparently, I think game exchange is a chain. Yes. I think it's like a chain in Europe or something. Yeah, there's like I think a couple of them in the states, maybe ten or so, if that. I'm guesstimating. Uh, but yeah, so I did purchase a GameCube from a different place, and then I got Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Sunshine, and that game. I'm definitely enjoying it more than I did Odyssey. Really? I mean, a lot of people like uh, Sunshine more than Odyssey. I will say that I do like the modern controls of Odyssey. I will say it was it's easier to control Mario and Odyssey than it is Sunshine. But it's also a different mechanic in the fact of you're just... You got flow and... Yeah, you got to... It's kind of like you're flying around with your little water jetpack thing, so it is harder to control Mario in the sense in Sunshine than it is Odyssey. But it kind of made me want to go back and play Galaxy because I really enjoyed playing Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii. I kind of want to buy a Wii because the Wii can play GameCube games. Yeah. Also, I know that um, the GameCube controller doesn't have a traditional two uh, yeah. stick setup. I guess I think you kind of have to use the C stick as the second. Yeah, and that's getting a little used to it. Does a GameCube controller does feel good though? I need to get back to playing that. Have you gotten to the levels that you don't use flow? Have you gotten to any of those yet? No, I don't think those so. Those are the, probably the best parts of the game, in my yeah. opinion. You get flow taken away from you. Okay. For like a, a small section. Oh yeah, I did do one of those. Yeah, they're yeah. not they're not easy. Some of those are really hard actually. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the other one I had to like I had to like take a break and come back to it and play it. And I think I ended up yeah. beating it, and so. I don't know, I'm still trying to find, like, obviously, like, the path to the end of the game is easy in the sense of, like, th- you get the star, you get the shines, and then you clean up the city and you save the city sort of thing. That's the whole... How, where are you? I don't know. That's the thing. In Odyssey, it's kind of just, like, you go from world to world. This is, like, this is your path. This is how you're going to save Peach. In this game, you're not saving Peach. You're just cleaning up a town... And so it's kind of just. Get that glass. I know. I need to just move it far away. So, uh, yeah. In this game, I kind of find myself like I have this world. I have this portal. I can. Yeah, go it's, into. Like, it's, it's more like uh, it's more like uh, sixty four. Yeah. Like there's worlds that you kind of like in, in sixty four. If I'm assuming a lot of you have played that game, you jump into the paintings and you jump yeah. into these portals and stuff. So you don't know which portal you're in, which. Exactly. So it's kind of just, in some of the places, it's just the same exact world. You just go to a different section of right. that level. Like, hey, climb this level. Like, climb this tower. Okay, well, you cleared the tower last time, so now you're going to go to this part of the level. And it's kind of just uh, keeps progressing right. throughout the level. But that's I've been playing that. I played some more Ape Out. I'm really enjoying that game. That is just a fun, kind of stressful game at times. Cause you just got it, man. You get just... He's got an ape out, man. It's that one of my favorite things about that game isn't just the game, but it's the music. It has some of I'd buy that soundtrack. It's if, super jazzy. It right? is. It's just yeah. it's really upbeat jazzy music and it goes to, you know, at the start of the at the start of the uh level, it's kind of just like all smooth, and then as you get into combat, it kind of just picks up, and then as you get shot, it kind of plays ditties and stuff. And so the soundtrack definitely reacts to uh how you're playing the other game i picked up that i don't think i'm gonna play again it's more of a couch game party game sort of thing it's called timberman versus and all you're doing is chopping down a tree you're going from left and right with the joy con uh chopping down the tree i didn't really enjoy that uh so i don't think i'm gonna be playing it again maybe i'll play it with some friends you buy a lot of strange games it was during their really weird sale i think i got timberman for like 75 cents or something how many games do you have on your Switch? 
Uh, a lot. It's got to be because I, I have like ten, maybe. I think I have maybe ten. There's no, dude. You did, didn't you buy like? Don't you buy like two games for sale? I swear. I don't know, man. You buy maybe. a bunch of. Do you buy? Maybe you didn't you buy a game for like fifty cents last year or something? And oh yeah, that little raceway game. Yeah. The, the sky game. Yeah. yeah. So maybe, maybe I have fifteen. So, I'll have to look at it. I'll I'll let y'all know next episode. You buy, I swear, it's like almost like buy like these mobile game experience. Well, yeah, but what I'm doing is I'm purchasing games and I'm using the gold coins just to buy the cheap games. Mm-hmm. So, um, okay. And then I played some Mortal Kombat 11. I wanted to test out the Ethernet cord in my PS4. Uh, that was a fine experience, except I got juggled hard. I need to get back into that. Um, Man, I am. Or just accept that I'm never going to be good at fighting games. That's also true. I th- you know, because I was like, okay, rematch. And I had a rematch with this guy like three times in a row. And then finally I realized that he's just better than me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, like whatever. Did he just rip through you? Or? Oh, yeah. It was rough. Like, That's he was nice. using Scorpion and I was using Collector. And it was just like, obviously I don't know the moves. So I'm kind of just like a button masher in the fact of, like, I want to learn the moves and I want to get better. But, you yeah. You got to play a lot. Exactly, and that's it was one of those. You, yeah. That's how you get good, man. I need to just play a lot. Did you play the division two this week? Did we play that together? Yes. It was, okay, that was this week. Oh, yeah, yeah, earlier was, in the week. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. So that was an okay experience. Well, we we, we needed we were doing uh, this thing. Um, there's this I don't even know how to say it. Basically, this huge mission where you, you do a bunch of little things, and um, you had to like collect cans and. Bottles of water for people. Yeah, I don't know what they call it in division, but it's pretty much like like Ryan was saying. You just do a bunch of smaller tasks to we need complete. To stop doing that though. Yeah, and just and just move on. I think that, I think we'll have a much better time because as soon as we as soon as went, it, 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 we did that for like half an hour, and yeah. then we were like, okay, this is done. We're not doing this anymore. Yeah. And I had a much better time once we actually started doing the other stuff. Yeah, we just need to do just the like main mission stuff. Well, we don't have to do just the main mission. Maybe I just don't want to collect stuff. water bottles for homeless people or whatever you're doing in that, yeah. in that mission. Maybe we're just not seeing the big picture or going to the right, right uh, places. We'll try again, though. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. We also got my friend Pedro on here. That game looks cool. I bought that, and it is probably one of the most enjoyable games I've played in the last 10 years. Oh, really? It is a blast it makes you feel like a badass the combat is cool like i thought the combat was cool and then it was like hey here's this thing like i'm not gonna spoil anything but it was like well yeah you do get to use some cool guns but it's pretty much like it's like john wick meets matrix meets something else that's really cool uh uh hold on let me think okay Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yes. This just, just, just going to look someone else, Keanu Reeves. Yeah, so it's like all those mixed together because you can slow down time and stuff, and it's you can dual shoot people, and it, it's really, really cool. Like bounce the bullets off the walls and stuff, right? You can bounce the bullets off the wall, but it's uh, you can bounce them off like little certain, certain things. Okay. Uh, and so you can like dual. Like portal, how you, you can only put the portals on yeah. certain services. Yeah. Uh, and with this, you can slow down time most of the time, but it, it's, it has like a timer and it runs down. Uh, and then you can dual, if you're dual wielding, you can look, you can lock on to one person. Well, there's not like lock on, but you can aim at one person. You can also aim the other gun at somebody else. Oh, that's cool. You have to use the two uh, yeah. analog sticks mm-hmm. that aim yeah. in separate directions. Yes. How difficult is that? You get used to it. It becomes like a second nature uh, because you're using, uh, I think you're using L to lock on to one. So you kind of just point the gun in one direction and then you use the other one to point the thing. And so you kind of just get used to it. So you jump, you can do backflips and stuff and you can aim as you're falling and you get, it's really like you're playing an arcade game and the fact of when you're falling. It's very arcade. Yeah. So like there's instances where you can jump down and you're falling down and you can slow down time and then shoot all these people as you're falling down this huge like pathway and you get different points like oh you get two times points for shoot uh, they call it like split damage or whatever or split kill so you can get like bonus points for that so you'll get bonus for like an air shot and then split kill and then doing a flip or whatever and so you'll get different points and it's just uh and then it gives you a rating at the end of the video and so it's actually uh 
pretty cool the way they they did that and i'm really enjoying it i don't know how long the game is all i know is i've done two major things and i think i'm going to like the third act right now if you want to call it that there's not really like chapters or anything it's kind of just like hey do this hey go do this hey go do this it's pretty linear when it comes to the the game and some of the parts were actually pretty challenging it looks uh, cool Mm -hmm. but i would recommend it if you own a switch and you got 15 bucks i'd say you know get it because it is definitely enjoyable it looks cool looks really cool um as far as what I've been playing, I played a pretty good amount of Overwatch. Uh, I've been playing it actually probably a few hours almost every day. Um, I've kind of enacted a new rule on myself these past few weeks or so where I may have talked about this. Um, I don't know. But um, if I, as long as it's not the first game, if I lose, I quit. I'm like, okay, I'm done. Um, and that, that way I, I, try not, I don't get nearly as frustrated and salty. And I've been winning most of my game, so I guess that's what can help for me. Um, I've continued my upward trajectory, I guess. Um, I'm still a scrub, still in silver, but I'm in fairly high silver now, so I'm hoping to actually hit gold. There you go. That's that better. Be nice. It's better than me, man. Better than me. Uh, yeah, it's steadily going up. Um, playing a lot of junk right. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm playing a lot of junk right, and I like I like them all. I've been, I've been playing more. Uh, Aggressive, but not not dumb, but um, not like my aggressive. Not like Jordan. Jordan plays like a lunatic. Yeah, man. Um, but I like to um, you know, like I'll play some mine on the ground, and um, I'll wait until I get both of my mines back. Okay. So I'll mine into them, drop a, a couple of grenades on them, mine, uh, yeah. drop a mine on top of them, and drop a second mine on top of them that shoots me back out. And I can usually get like a pick by doing that, and then do a decent amount of damage to a lot, several, yeah. you know, members of their team, right. and then one of my that'll let one, one of the other people on my team get his second pick, and then it's six v four, you know. Yeah, nice. So that helps a lot. Also, <clears throat> I like playing fair a lot. I've been playing a lot of far, fair, or whatever. Dang! All right, you're picking up my heroes. Well, I've been playing far for a while, but That's true. yeah, I've been playing I, far more. I also this. haven't played Overwatch in eons, so. Oh yeah, that's true. I have. I, I played have. it last night technically when we were trying to. I can't figure out why my mic. I have a very expensive mic that I bought. Um, well, I actually didn't buy. It. I stole it. I didn't steal it actually, but it's okay if you stole it. What are they gonna do? <laughs> I, I didn't steal it. Um, it was my brother's, and he, I guess, kind of gave it to me. Um, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. It wouldn't work. The mic. Yes, would not the mic work. wouldn't work. So I was trying to figure that out, and then Jordan started playing and. I guess that's the first time I fight in a while. Exactly, yeah. I need to get back into it. I think there was an update, and I was like, I don't have time to update this. I'm going to update Apex Legends instead. If you so. played, so you haven't used New Hero or anything? Uh, no, I've played Baptiste. Well, you just said you hadn't played in Eons. He came out like less than a month ago, probably. Oh, okay. Then I guess I've played. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess I just forgot. There's also an event going on right now. Um, You can get a Baptiste skin. I think there's still several days left in that. You have to... uh win nine games in like competitive quick play or um the arcade okay kind of like what they did with the the diva skin exactly what they okay. do with the diva skin i do yeah. like that baptiste skin i saw it on the it's loading pretty cool. screen it's, so. it's i think his head looks kind of weird in it but i do like it um i'm i'm rocking it right now so i guess uh yeah must not bother me that much i need to get back into overwatch because i still have a somber pop and it's an exclusive so i guess i need to go play my girl somber someone's got one of the best skins in the guy frankenstein the bride of frankenstein skin is so yeah. Nice. I really do enjoy Sombra. Maybe I, I'll... Yeah, I played a little bit of Genji. I was doing really well, and then I lost like four games in a row with him. And I'm like, oh, let's put him, let's put him back in my pocket. Yeah. Let's not, let's not get too uh, upset about this. I talked about, I think, beating Portal 2 last week. Yeah, you did. Um, it's really good, obviously. Um, highly, highly recommend that. And then I moved on. I've been playing some Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I think I've put about between eight and ten hours into that. Okay. I, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Hey, you're um, doing better than me. I put in 20 hours, and it was just, I just couldn't do it. Yeah, you have some strange, and then, you, <laughs> and then you had a, what? What was your game of the year last year? We happy few. We happy few. We happy few. I don't think I had heard anybody give that game more than a seven. I loved that game so much. But you also complained about it all the time. I did. I did. But I knew what I was getting into when I started playing that game. There's DLC out for it. I can yeah, play. Yeah, I saw that. And I, I, I'm not going back because it just ran so terribly. But my biggest problem with uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey so far is it's one of those games, 
Um, I, I was, I'm at level nine, I think, somewhere around there, and I'm, I'm, I'm fighting against level nine people, and I'm just cutting through them like, you know, cold butter with a hot knife, and I. Uh, then you meet I, that I, level I, eleven. I, I fight against someone who is level eleven, and I had to grind just to be one yeah. guy. Yeah, like, I don't know how I feel about this. It's, it's uh, pretty, and Cassandra's cool, and it, it feels nice, but it just. I don't know. I'm, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm, I'm going to keep playing it for now, but I may, I may move on any day. You never know. I'm, put, I'm trying to put, you know, two, three, four hours into it every day yep. so I can beat it within, you know, like a few weeks, maybe. Yep. That made me think of uh, Trover Saves the Universe. I talked about it last week, but I'm excited for the DLC, which I don't know when it comes out, but I'll definitely talk about it because I'll be playing the DLC because I really enjoyed it. I didn't know that. that. I did not know that I was getting DLC. Yeah, it's getting free on DLC either this month or next month, one of those ah, two. I see, um, I see. But it's, I enjoyed that game to bits. It was awesome. Uh, also, Octopath Traveler. Um, I picked that back up. That, that's such a pretty game. I had never seen it in person until I saw Ryan played it, playing it, and uh, it was... Like you said, it, it that game is gorgeous. It's very has a very different art style. Um, I'm glad I picked it back up. I've got I'm probably about ten hours into that as well. Um, I really I was playing it a lot in handheld mode, but I've been playing it on TV mode with my uh, pro controller, and I really like it in uh, in TV mode a lot. Um, the uh, the some of the I mean it's fine if I just have to actually pay attention. Some of the writing is a little small for me on the handheld version yeah. so I like it better on the TV um, what's cool is you know it has voice acting and it's a you know old school JRPG so that, that's cool yeah that really surprised me I was like what is that noise he listened to a podcast and it was like no it's Octopath's voice acting it was it surprised me yeah most uh, you know games of that ilk don't have uh, voice acting I've also been watching some stuff um, I finished uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I'm caught up. Well, I'm not caught up completely because there's, I think there's a season that's not on Hulu that they have not released on Hulu yet. Um, so I, I'm very much looking forward to whenever they release that on Hulu. Nice. I love that show so much. It's probably one of my top ten favorite shows now. It's so goofy and bizarre, and they're the worst people in the world. Dennis is a sociopath, um, but he's not really. The ending of that uh, of the last season actually. It got me a little misty eye, which is weird because that is one of the last shows that I would ever think would do that. So here's the big question. If they made Sunny and Philadelphia Pops, would you buy them? Nah, okay. no. I just, I can't. Um, maybe if they had, it got to be limited edition. That's true. Maybe, yeah, limited was, edition, baby. It's got to be limited edition. I, it would be cool to have, uh, it would be cool to have the gang as, as some figures or something, yeah. but... That's all, that's a lot of that's, that would be five pops. That's true. That's that's five too many. Yeah, and that and that's not even if you include cricket or um I can't or uh, Ponderosa. There's some side characters that if you watch the show you know who I'm talking about. That are great characters in their own. They're not main character. Cricket's almost a main character in some ways, but the, I mean I would want I would want to have at least the main five. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's really about it. What's no been, this kid? What you're looking at them. Also watched Men in Black International. Oh, I I thought that was I don't know why I thought that was, but that was that was the thought. It's of the best about. Men in Black. Was it? No. That's what I thought. This might be the worst. It's fine. It's fine. It's not bad, but it is it is the definition of you know fine, fine, whatever. Mm. Nothing. It's a little dumb. It's nothing special. The creature designs aren't anything to write home about. The you know you're probably gonna see the. Uh, the ending coming, maybe not the exact ending, but you're like, okay, I understand what's going on. Some, but probably halfway through the movie, at least, you know, you might be like, uh, I think I know what's happening. And the acting is fine. It's nothing, you know, it's got a bunch of great actors in it. It's got Liam Neeson, Chris Hemsworth, uh, can't think of her name, uh, Valkyrie from the Thor. Marvel movies. Yeah. It's got, I think her name is. Wait, Ian it's got Johnson. Liam and Chris? No, not Liam Hemsworth, Liam Neeson. Oh, yeah, duh. Whoops, my bad. Yeah, um, it's fine, whatever. If you're make, like a massive Men in Black fan, maybe you should go see it. But I wouldn't really. It's one of those movies that I would say um, I wouldn't really recommend to anybody. But if you could get a free ticket, maybe you go see it, whatever. Okay. That's, that's why I went to see it. My brother had a, a ticket that he let me use. So, I mean, that worked out well for me. There you go. Huh. All right. And uh, I got second place at a card game tournament. Oh, that's true. 
That's true. <laughs> I technically got. Cha- I technically won because the judge called the the play wrong. It was a card fight Vanguard, and I was playing Kagero, which are the dragon people. I don't. I don't understand Weeaboo. And I. That? It's dragon people. It's big old dragons. Dragon people. No, it's dragons. Big old you, dragons. You Draco file. Sure. I'm disturbed by that. Don't be. It's okay. <laughs> so the look you're giving me right now <laughs> tells me that it's not okay. So, uh, and I played against actually one of my fr- one of our friends, James. And so the judge, uh, like said I could do this thing, and I did it. And you know we, I got the damage. We shook hands. We scooped. And then we were sitting there. You know, everyone was like, "Okay, we're gonna take a picture." I had the championship mat, and it was kind of like, "Wait a minute," like. I couldn't have done that move. And so since me and James are friends, we just went back and played the match again. And he ended up winning. I got second place. And he got first place. So depending on how you want to look at that, technically I won because of a missed call on the judge. But So it, even, even though you cheated, you won. Yep. That's right. I remember this is nothing to do with that. But years and years ago, me and my grandmother used to – uh, we we were playing dominoes or something, and she and she beat me, and she's like, "I just realized I was cheating the whole time." Oh, <laughs> oh. I, was like, I don't care. Old Granny Smith. I mean, either one of us knew how to play whatever game we were trying to play. That's true. But speaking of games, we say that's true. Were you there? No. Why'd you wink at me? I just I'm practicing winking. Oh, okay. Got to make sure I can keep Fair my. Enough. Lincoln skills up. Let's but, move on to some new games, though. Exactly. Cadence of High Rules out now. For that the game new... looks cool. It, uh, I think I'm picking it up. It's a, uh, it is a kind of sequel esque to uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer, um, crossover with the Legend of Zera, Zera it, Zelda franchise. It's it, kind of a rhythm issue. Is it Necrodancer? Yes. Oh, I thought it was Necromancer. No, it's called Necrodancer because mm. it's a rhythm game. Oh, okay. It looks really cool. I really cool. want to pick that up. Uh, let's see. That's out now for the Switch. Judgment is out now for the PS4. If you don't know, that is a uh, kind of sequel offshoot to the Yakuza series. Mm-hmm. Um, very Japanese. I've heard really good things about that. Well. I've thought about getting it. Uh, this is the game, if you don't know. Um, the original Japanese voice actor was caught with cocaine. Um, which is a big deal in Japan, for those of you yeah, that like don't know. Yeah, like a massive deal. So they had to, like, I believe they redid all his lines. Yeah. And they changed his face. Yeah. They, they like took out his. They took out his character pretty much in the game. Seriously? Yeah. They're wow. Like, was he the main character? No, it was just they changed his face for the American release. But if for some reason you're still you get to play the Japanese version, his face is still in the game. Wait, what? That sounds like it should be the other way around because we don't. I mean, because cocaine. I don't think we would do that because somebody got caught with cocaine here. No, no, did I say it reverse? You said they changed it in America. Oh yeah, no, no, no. they took out his face in Japan. Okay. And they uh, left his face in the in the American version, I think, if I remember right. Okay. Okay. But yeah. either way, the voice actor got in trouble. Yeah, for... but I think it's the same voice actor who does like Woody or something in Toy Story. Something. Yeah. And um, they had to do the same thing to Toy Story, not Toy Story, to uh, Kingdom Hearts, because yeah, Toy Story is in Kingdom Hearts three. Old boy done got himself got. But you know. There's magic in everything, and now you can carry magic in your phone with you. With Harry Potter, Wizards Unite. Have you tried this? No, I looked at it and immediately did not want to download it. I downloaded it, and I was like, kind of, I kind of like it a little bit. Okay. Um, I, I, I didn't play it. I only played it for like half an hour, so okay. I want to put some more time into it. We can do that today. I'll download it. We can go um, be we wizards. We can go walking around. Yeah. Uh, I think it has, um, I love Harry Potter. Harry Potter and Pokemon are probably... You know, my two favorite franchises. I like Harry Potter, but as I get older, I don't know if I just don't care about Harry Potter as much, but I definitely don't like it as much as I used to. You scumbag. That's okay. Harry Potter is better it's than Star Wars. Patronum. Dang it, it didn't work. It's better than Star Wars. Harry Potter is better than Jurassic Park. Harry Potter is better than uh, the Nazi Party. Okay. It's just better. So Harry Potter's better than Ingl- Inglorious Bastards. I don't, I don't. I've never seen Inglorious Bastards. Oh, okay. So maybe. Maybe. You're gonna say yes. I just. Yep, it is. Okay. Yes. I mean, I think also this is so off topic. Um, actually, no, I'm not gonna go down that topic. Okay. We're so make a Harry Potter podcast or something, but 
I don't want to go down that. So for those of you that want to play this game, if you have a smartphone, download it. If you don't have a smartphone, borrow your friend's smartphone. Who doesn't have a smartphone? Who is listening to a podcast that doesn't have a smartphone? I don't know. If you don't have a smartphone and you're listening to this podcast, let us know. At one of me podcast on Twitter. Have uh, you seen this new Forza uh, Lego thing? I like that it a looks lot. so cool. I like that a lot. I'm a big Lego fan. Uh, obviously, I don't have little Lego sets or anything, but I do enjoy... Lego sets are expensive, man. They are. Uh, I do enjoy Legos, just everything about Legos. I like creating with Legos. I got I got a couple little minifigs scattered around my room, like it's uh, Lego World or whatever. You have a few of those, yeah. yeah. Uh, I still haven't seen the second movie, which I heard is really good. I, need I to haven't pr- either. The first one is great. It's better I need to than buy Batman it. Lego. Really? Which I like. Okay. But, yeah. I'll have to pick that up. Pick it Pick it up on Blu-ray. Because I got the uh, Lego Movie 1 on Blu-ray for like super cheap. So I'm sure I can find the second one for super cheap. It's great. So, I mean, everything is awesome. I don't even really see what this is. It's, it's Forza Horizon 4 is getting Lego DLC. Some yeah, so it's... Said that. Exa- yeah, exactly. Uh, it's Forza's getting some Lego DLC, which is, is really cool. Now? Yeah, it should be out now. If it's not, I'm trying to find it. I can't. Did you type in Forza Lego? Yes, I did. Okay. But this is really cool. Apparently, uh, you can play regular... I think it says you can play regular uh, cars in the Lego world or, or Lego cars in the... Or... Hold on. You can play with regular cards in a Lego world or Lego cards in a regular world. Yeah, that's and the trailer looks really cool. Go yeah, check it check out. Check it out. It looks awesome. If you're at all interested, I I think Forza is on Games Pass, so I may check this out. I love Forza. Is oh my, is so 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 good. I'm not a big racing fan either, but I definitely enjoy. I'm not the biggest racing fan. I'm not a car guy, but I <clears throat> absolutely adore Forza. Yeah. I, like I said, I'm not a big... I used to play car car games every once in a while, like Gran Turismo, the you original. car games, do you mean you used to run people over with... With RC cars? Yes. Oh, well, that's just me. Yeah. You just run over their heels? Yep. Stop it! Ow, it hurts! Yeah, so... Dude, you remember that, uh... <laughs> I meant to talk about this in, uh... And what we've, what we've been playing or whatever section... Um, wasn't it the Swamp Avenger, Swamp Ass Avenger? Swamp Thing? Toxic Avenger. Oh, Toxic Avenger, yeah! That is the <laughs> weirdest movie. I did. I don't know if I want to say I enjoyed that or not. But Do you want to watch the funny. second one? No. Yes, I want to no, watch no. the second one. It's. I almost bought a t-shirt of him uh, like from eBay, but I didn't. But I really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, just a quick shout out to that movie real quick. Toxic it's, Avenger! It's a very strange movie. Uh, that's all I want to say about yeah. it. Jordan, for some reason, had it. And, yeah, that's all I want to say about that. Let's move on to some more things that aren't disturbing. The Collection of Mana is on Nintendo Switch now. Yeah, it's got a bunch of the Mana games. Check it out if you got a Switch. You deserve it to yourself to play these games. I, I, I'm not, I, I think I have Secret of Mana. Uh, I think I on, do too. Well, it's on uh, the SNES Classic, I think. Oh, I think I have it on PS4 for some reason. I don't know. Do you have that remake? Maybe. They've remade it, I think. I don't know. Either way, Collection of Mana. I think this might be coming out on PS4, but I looked up and I couldn't find it, so maybe not. Yeah. I think people hope it's coming out for PS4, but I don't think we got a release date for it yet. Okay. So, also, coming out to the Switch, we have Super Mario Maker Dose. On June the 28th, uh, are you at all interested in this? No. Yeah, I just, I, I had the first one and I never, I mean, to be fair, it was on the Wii U and I hate the Wii U yeah. so much. It had some amazing games, but I hated using that, that thing. Um, But I didn't use it that much, so I'm probably not going to play this either. I'd just rather Nintendo make more Mario games. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and lastly, Heavy Rain is coming to the Epic Store via your computer yeah same people who made the quantum dreams mm-hmm. and there was another game i can't remember it yeah and heavy, heavy rain is from what i understand the one that most people like the most yeah for a while i got heavy rain confused with uh detroit become human i don't know why well detroit become human was last year's game and gotcha heavy rain was made years and years ago uh that's maybe that's what it was yeah all so. right let's move on to the news though so, coming from U.S. Gamers, CD Projekt Red says it won't hold anything back from Cyberpunk 2077 content for future DLC. 
Uh, it's similar to how they approached the Witcher DLC, apparently. Uh, did I? Oh, I forgot to put that in. I played some of the Witcher, and I've only played about an hour. It was kind of slow and boring, but I probably will get back to it later. But back to the Cyberpunk article. Uh, okay. So, in an interview with Prima Games, yeah, UI... 2018, we act with you. <laughs> That's right. Uh, an interview with Prima Games UI coordinator Alvin Liu says the team is, quote, talking about future expansions, but they want to make sure everything is complete. Uh, quote, I know when I was playing The Witcher 3 and I finished everything, I still want to know, uh, I still want to know more about what everyone's up to. I think we're going to have opportunities like that as well for Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, so uh, I know obviously a lot of people get mad when they, they accuse some games of, quote, like cutting content that they claim was already in the game and then making them pay for it. I've never really been a big um, component of that because they can charge what they want. Um, exactly. Lou uh, actually answered that question right up. He said, quote, we're not withholding any content. We're not withholding story for the future to try to, you know, monetize it or sell it in any pieces or anything like that. We're going to get you the whole full value game here. I mean that's good. I never, I never really, you know, I didn't think that they would, you know, try to claim that, you know, give us DLC that they made during the game that was actually part of the game that would make the game seem less complete. Exactly. I wouldn't. They're, they're saying I would never worried about that with uh, CD Projekt Red or sorry with Cyberpunk anyway. Uh, or CD Projekt Red in general. Yeah, that's what I would say. True. I yeah. mean, I think that sometimes people accuse. Um, corporations or um, developers or whatever of kind of cutting content when they don't but I mean I would say that I'm sure it does happen sometimes um, if I, I don't know some random Ubisoft or some random big video game developer might cut content but at the same time um, I understand it they put time into it they put their manpower into it their money into it and if they want to charge you uh, what, what you see is extra I mean that's their right um what what are you to determine what is the quote full video game? Why do you you know? I've always thought that was a little strange that people get so upset over that. But um, that being said, CD Projekt Red is going to probably give you a 10, 15, 20 hour experience as DLC. This isn't horse armor, you know, or um, loot boxes or something. This is going to I'm sure probably be some big huge multi hour experience. It's probably going to be as long or longer than a normal Call of Duty campaign. Exactly. They'll definitely give you uh, what you... They'll give you what's worth your money. Yeah, they're not going to shaft you. Worth your time. Uh, just, I talked briefly about how I started playing The Witcher, and one of the cool things I thought was interesting is I got the complete edition, and when I started the game, it said, hey, you have these three options. You can either play the game with a new game, and you can play the DLC later, or you can play either one of the DLCs you want right now. And I was really? Like, that's yeah. a little strange. And I was like, that's really cool. Uh, I don't know if it's the com because I got the complete edition or whatever edition I got, uh, but I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I assume you would have to beat the game or at least, you know. No, I clicked on it. I didn't go throughout the whole process, but it pretty much gave me this screen that said, hey, this is what's going to happen. If you choose this option, you'll get a character and stuff that's this level so you can handle the stuff and enjoy the DLC if you just want to play the DLC. Ah, huh, okay. Cool, so, cool. I thought that was really cool from uh, CG Project Red Team to do to allow people to do that. Yeah, and next up from Kotaku, we got some stuff that might not be so cool. Uh, EA has said that their loot boxes are quote, surprise mechanics, and that they are also quote, quite ethical. Um, I know there are quite a lot of EA haters out there, so I'm sure they are... Uh, Hating every second of this. This company never ceases to well, amaze. I don't. What, what's strange to me, I, I don't have a problem with loot boxes necessarily. I like loot boxes. Why would they? I mean, I don't want to say I like loot boxes, but I don't dislike them. I like loot boxes if they give you the chance to get in-game cosmetics that make your character look cooler, but don't give you any strategical advantage over people in the game. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of agree in some uh, sense. Apparently, EA's Kerry Hopkins has made these comments as part of an oral evidence session with UK Parliament's Di Digital Cor Cultural Media and Sport Committee. Um, apparently, that came from PC Games N. So this panel of individuals ask Hopkins 
what if they considered loot boxes to be an ethical feature. Uh, Hopkins responded by saying, quote, we don't call them loot boxes. And he then added, talking about how EA refers to them as, quote, her. S- thank you, sorry, her <laughs> response. I'm so sorry, madam, that I keep calling you a him. Uh, she added that EA refers to loot boxes as surprise mechanics. Surprise! It's a duplicate. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, they go on to elaborate why they call them surprise mechanics. They said it's just like blind packs. Like Pokemon or magic cards. Yeah, they kind of they kind of went all along that line. She said, quote, if you go to Target, I don't know what version of Target is I don't she said I don't know what your version of Target is. Walmart Kroger. Exactly. Well this is he she's speaking to people that aren't from the US so they might not have Target in. Anyway, if you go to a store and that store sells lots of toys, you can search for surprise toys. And you know you'll find what you'll find is something that people enjoy. They enjoy surprises. And also it's something that's been a part of toys for years, whether it's kindred eggs or hatchimals or LOL surprise. We don't we do think that the way we have implemented these kinds of mechanics in FIFA, of course, is just one of the, you know, FIFA is one of their huge games. Uh, it's the biggest game, if I uh, remember correctly. Yeah, exactly. So that she goes on to talk about FIFA Ultimate Team and their packs. It's quite, it's actually quite ethical and quite fun. People enjoy it. Uh, and so that's kind of their uh, comparison to that. Of, yeah, uh, they also go on to talk about how they do not consider... Uh, Loot boxes, gambling. Um, I think I believe countries like um, Australia, the, the Gambling Commission, yeah, uh, uh, said that they don't agree that that that, that 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 they say that loot boxes are not gambling. Exactly. Uh, countries like Belgium and the Netherlands have both outlawed loot boxes, saying that it is against the law to, in certain circumstances, to uh, purchase those things. So it's kind of just up in the air with loot boxes now. Um, at least they're not. Trying to say how people don't, you know, they're wagging their finger at children nowadays. Not- I think that is kind of, um, first, first of all, I mean, I, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole again, but you know, you got to make sure your kids don't have your credit card. Obviously exactly. That's bad. Um, but I kind of feel like I don't think this should be regulated. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I kind of feel like maybe it should be done through the ESRB or uh, PEGI. I think is uh, Europe or England's uh, version or whatever of the uh, ESRB. I feel like it should be somehow regulated or uh, if it's going to be regulated, it has to be within video games. It, if the government steps in, that is bad, bad, bad. I do not want that. So although I don't really believe they should be regulated per se, they may have to be in some form or fashion because uh, the government... This is, I don't want the government touching anything that they don't need to touch. And they don't know, you know, 45 years old is young in the government. They don't know anything about video games. This is not their area of expertise. And I don't want them overstepping their bounds. Even if, even if they do know, I don't want them stepping in because that's not their place. I couldn't say it any better myself. And that's why we're going to move on to another article from U.S. Gamer. So your scammer getting multiple, 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 just two, let's just two. <laughs> multiple, multiple love from what I mean today. So I'm still thinking about person this, this, this thing, but uh, let me tell you what it's about. So Sega is going to bring back their old team together to create the Genesis Mini. Did they not already do this I years think, ago or last year? I think they talked about it, but I guess we didn't really know who was going to work on it. But, you know, I thought this article was interesting, so... Obviously, back in 2016, Nintendo blew open the market by, you know, uh, words are hard sometimes. The NES Classic Edition, and they did really well with that. So Sega is finally going to bring their Genesis Mini back, which is awesome. I think it's great that they're going to be doing this, and it's, it's so small. It's like half the size of the original console. I never owned one of these. No, not many people did. I think the console... I think they stopped making it like two years after they first released it. Yeah. Which is crazy. I know a lot of people. It's always weird because I know a lot of people didn't um, 
buy this, but at the same time, it seems like a lot of people have like memories of it, even though it exactly. sold very poorly. So I think, I, depending on the price, if it's under... I'm trying to find a price. Okay. So while he does that, I can tell you a little you bit. You would be able to purchase a controller for $20. Okay, cool. But I'm not seeing a price for the Mini itself. There might be one on their official website. Well, it may just not, since it hasn't released yet, you know. That's true. So I think it's cool that they're getting together the original I mean, team. Yeah, like we said, not many people bought this, so it would be cool for a lot of people to play the games that they didn't get to play 20 years ago. And the Sega Genesis looks... It's just so cute. Like uh, it's crazy to compare how big these consoles are compared to their um, mini self to, the, to comparing the mini to the original. Oh yeah, there's a picture here, and you can just look at the difference. I kind of got used to the how the SNES Classic looks, and then we went to a Game Exchange as we were talking about earlier, and they have some uh, SNESs, and it's oh yeah, this looks massive compared to the uh, compared to the mini. Exactly. So uh, the Sega Genesis Mini will launch on September nineteenth. 2019, a year out from the 30th anniversary of the console, but it marks the 20th anniversary of the Sega Dreamcast. So, and then oh, this the, is the Genesis, not the Dreamcast. I'm done. Yeah, it's the I was talking about the Dreamcast. Oh, okay. Well, that makes more sense. But it's uh, it has some games that I never actually I don't think I played any of these games besides Sonic. So this looks like it'd be a fun game because Earthworm Jim is one of those games. Or sorry, Toe Jam and Earl. <laughs> Uh, it's one of those series that I've always been kind of interested in, but never actually played. So I, I'll be coming out with a new Toe Jam and Earl. Or... I do believe, yes. So I think this is awesome. They're getting the old, they're getting the team back together. So I'm the, sure the, they're re they're making a Genesis Mini or a... they are making a Sega Genesis Mini. Okay, correct. Okay. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe in and this is coming out twenty years after. Yes, it's... after the launch of. It's coming out in the year... The 20 years after the of uh, after the Dreamcast. Correct. Okay, yeah, and Dreamcast is... Okay, I had those mixed up for some yeah. reason. I always mix those up because yeah, I, I did never... I didn't ever... Yeah, I was, in, I was like Nintendo and PlayStation. Exactly. So I think this is a cool thing to get you back... Get people into the ecosystem, uh, especially if it's under 100 bucks. Uh, it's definitely something oh, it that... better be under 100 bucks. I hope they don't make the same mistake PlayStation did. Oh, man. I saw one of those for $30 the other day. Yeah, still I still, too and expensive. I still wouldn't buy it. Still too expensive. No, I'd buy one if they were five dollars. Oh man, I'd buy. I mean, I think they look cool, but I don't care about most of the games, and most of the games that I do care about are available on other consoles. True, that that is true. So, up next we have some uh, news from GameSpot. Uh, finally, I say finally, um, Kaz Horai has retired from Sony and PlayStation. Months back, you know, he announced that he would be leaving. And this article is frozen up on me, so you're going to have to okay, so take it from there. For those of you that don't know, his last day was June 18th. And it will. he talked about how he will serve as a senior advisor and he will continue to provide counsel as requested by Sony's management team. So it's good he's still going to be in the... So he's not going to be gone completely. No, he's still he's going to take a background seat. It's not like Reggie where it's like... Peace out. I'm going on vacation. All right. You deserve a vacation, Reggie. You worked. You did wonders. Thank you. Uh, but here, 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 here. I'm going to take a Japanese pronouncing class for English words sometimes. So, but he it his his decision to step down was partially because he said, "quote He was worn down from the travel schedule he's maintained during the last six years as CEO." And he's, you know, he said he's finally able to wind down after being, you know, just tired after all these years, which he's going to be spending more time with his family in California, which is always good. It's always good to spend time with your family. If you can. Yeah, for real, for sure. Um, a lot of retirements this year. Exactly. I mean, it's just, you know, uh, the baton was passed. He said to uh, Ho Hoshidia. That is uh, his successor. He said he possesses a breadth of experience and persistence perspective, as well as an unwavering leadership qualities to require to manage Sony's diverse array of businesses. As such, the I, it, he, they're the ideal person to do the company in the future. So this guy's going to kind of lead the uh, charge with PS5, I guess. I would hope so. And apparently, he's got his 
he's got Mr. Hero's seal of approval. So. That's good. That's good. That's, I mean, I guess he uh, he did help a lot with the, uh, in some ways, with the PS4. Uh, I know he wasn't directly over it, but he did lead the entire company. Yeah. So they definitely done a lot of good things with that, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a good thing, hopefully, as I move all my things around on my, my article is still not acting right well that's okay this next article is coming from polygon and it is about a Crap. is it acting stupid too yeah just keep going okay I'm try to get it open okay so this half-life three fan-made project you know valve has openly said we're not making half-life we're not doing it no I think Portal 3 would come out before Half-Life 3. Or if Valve needs a lot of money, Ryan was saying this the other day, they'll just come out with Left 4 Dead 3, Half-Life 3, and Portal 3 available now, today. Yeah. $80 a piece. Gabe, Gabe, Gabe Newell, yeah. Yeah. He's going to walk out on stage at E3 one year. He's just going to say, Half-Life 3, Portal 3, Left 4 Dead 3 now. And just walk off stage. That's it. And they would, they never, all of them could retire that same day. Valve could never do anything ever again. And they would, they would never but need But that's not what this is. No, it's not. So, people love Half Life. I love Half Life. The fans of Half Life are crazy creative from everything from different mods where you can play as Spyro. And there's just a ton of great community for the Half Life games. So, as any fandom, what they did is something beautiful. They made a Half-Life 3 fan project, and apparently it's going pretty well. Uh, there's there's a team of 80 people currently working on the story outline by the original writer of uh, Half-Life. So the project is named Project Borealis, and it just recently came out with an update. The article is going to be linked in the description if you'd like to check it out in depth with the video. So it's going to be by uh, Project Borealis, got going last year, and it's inspired by the synopsis from Half-Life 2, Episode 3, and it is going to be pretty awesome, apparently, if we ever get to play this. Is this going to be good enough for fans? Well, it's fan-made, and it's using the writer that wrote uh, Half-Life 2, Episode 3, so it should be pretty good, hopefully. Yeah, does it say when we get a release date or anything? Nope, it's just an update, and you know, obviously, there's a lot of face, uh, space to fill in. You know, they got a lot to do, but pretty much they just, uh, this is just pretty much showing like a little bit of the concept art and some of the mechanics and stuff, and it looks not bad for what they're showing us. So, how long have they been working on this? I think about a, about about since 2017. Okay, okay. So. I'd say I'd say a year and a half probably if I had to give them a timeline. I know a lot of people are really big Half Life fans. Um, I'm not. I didn't really. I was not a computer gamer, if I want to use that term, um, until a couple of years ago. So I didn't play any of the Valve games at all, really. I know they came to some of them. Did come to console, but I was not aware of them at the time, so I didn't play them. So I mean, congratulations to all the. Uh, Half Life people who I mean, like I said, I'm inter I'm inter interested to see if this. I'm assuming the answer maybe no, honestly. If this will sati satiate all the Half Life Two fans out there who want a Half Life Three. Obviously, this is not official, so you might be like, oh man, it doesn't count. So I'll be very interested to see how this is received. Valve, if you're listening, welcome. Uh, you don't have to. I don't think Valve's listening. I don't think you have to say whatever you're gonna say. Well. You don't have to make Half-Life 3. It's okay. You get my seal of approval. But if you could spend, you know, I don't know, a little bit of money and maybe make a Half-Life 3 comic book, maybe 10 issues, 12 issues, kind of just seal up the story, I'd be happy with that too. You know? Just uh, if you're thinking about what to Didn't do. Didn't the writer or somebody release a bunch of, like, fan, not fan art, but art and, yeah. uh, and uh, writing and mm -hmm. stuff last year or the year before? So yeah, they did. And so they, they pretty much were just like, listen, we're not going to do this. And so it's, you know, I, it's never going to happen. Uh, and I'm okay with that. We have tons of Half-Life lore to go through, tons of... I still don't really believe the Final Fantasy VII is coming out. It's not. No. 
Not next year. No. I mean, so, that, that, that footage did look really pretty. But. Someone argued. Yes. Sorry, I was yawning. Uh, they were saying, like, it has a release date. I'm like, you know what also had a release date? Kingdom Hearts. And it got pushed back. And then I, you know, it, it came out. But, what are you uh, talking about? Oh, you t- well, yeah, but I thought, okay. And I was saying that I'm like, they're like, I'm like Final Fantasy it remakes. Back, it didn't get pushed back that far though. I know, but still, I was like, Final Fantasy VII is never coming out. Like it, it can't. I don't know. If, I don't know if the whole. I don't know if the whole thing. I am worried about that game. I don't know if the whole thing is ever going to come out. They just they just released the first episode. That's all. I wouldn't be that surprised. But so. uh, Square Enix has been doing good lately. Let's not get down that route. Exactly. Oh crap! They could just open another. Yep, I accidentally opened up an, a Game Fuel uh, website. Is that like Red Bull's brother? It's Mountain Dew Game Fuel. Oh, yeah, that thing. Okay. Well, while Ryan tries to get us a sponsorship for game, from Game Fuel. Holy crap. Do we have a Mountain Dew sponsorship? I'd, I'd start drinking caffeine again. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, I love Mountain Dew. Uh, so... This IGN article tells us more about ye old Elden Ring. Okay, so in this article it says, first off, Elden Ring is an evolution of Dark Souls, says creator Hidetaki Miyazaki. First off, I do want to say that I am glad because it seems to me that this is still going to be a hard action RPG um, with assuming Souls-like uh, elements. Um, but I am very curious. Um, this is a b- very long article. Uh, I'm assuming we can probably link it uh, in the description or in the um, show notes if you want to check it out. Very long article. It would take a while to cover all of it. But one thing, um, another thing I should say, is that according to this, it's going to be more open world. That's different for Dark Souls games. They, they're, they're more... The Dark Souls games are traditionally kind of Metroidvania. Okay. Metroidvania? Ugh. Metroidvania, and um, that's kind of opposite, almost opposite in some ways of an open world game. Okay, huh? I think they're doing a lot of new things. Dark, the Souls genre, Dark Souls genre, whatever you want to call it, has kind of developed into its own gaming category now. Oh it's, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I don't think it's a category for me personally, but I know a lot of people enjoy them. So I'm curious to see about uh, friends. Yeah. That listen to this, let us know what you think about this game and what you would like to see in this Elden sign. He said that, quote, It all started with me being a fan of Mr. Martin's works. A song of ice and fire and his drama adaptation, Game of Thrones, are both masterpieces. And although many people are not a big fan of this latest season, it seems that uh, Miyazaki is a huge fan of George R. R. Martin's, which is uh, good to hear. Um, you know, they can kind of collab and bounce ideas off of one another um i think that uh miyazaki is also a master at his craft so they the, both of these guys are very good at building uh worlds uh, it's gonna be interesting here with this dark souls-esque game that's in an open world and it's also saying that there's not gonna be uh, there's gonna be towns and stuff but they're not gonna be super populated because uh, miyazaki was saying that he didn't want to um take on an open world which they've never really done before and a bustling town which they've uh, also never done before so um, that kind of makes sense moving on to some more news about a game that a lot of people love and we enjoyed both ourselves coming from dual shockers is oh kingdom hearts 3 yeah kingdom hearts 3 so tensura nomura reveals new details on kingdom hearts 3 dlc re colon mind so apparently he's talking about how the he opened up a little bit about the E3 trailer that we got to see at this year's E3. He was asked if the fights were part of the main story and if they're limit cut fights. Uh, Nomura answered saying that they're part of the main story. So the limit cut fights are what they call uh, in Japanese, they're the Organization 13 uh, data battles. The harder bonus boss battles you get to do later in the game. After oh, you, like in Kingdom yeah. Hearts 2? Yeah. Okay. Same That's thing. Cool. Just, uh, Those are hard as hell. Yeah, they are. So apparently it's uh, you fight against each member with uh, one of the new additions. It was one of the new additions in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. And, you know, it's so they're 
Tensura Nomura added he can't give too many details away yet, uh, while it will include at least uh, as many limit cut bonus fights as in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, which means there will be at least 13, which is awesome. He also mentioned that the DLC has story content and bosses that you'll see you normally uh, that you'll see as you normally play through everything, and that it is going to be released as uh, this new form of DLC. That what's the word I'm looking for? Oathkeeper. That's the word. So you get Oathkeeper to Oathkeeper is the name of the DLC. Or? No, sorry. In the trailer, you get to see Sora using a new version. Of the Oathkeeper Keyblade. Okay. And Tensura Nomura added that this new form will be released as free LC, as free DLC the same time as the Remind DLC. Okay, so this isn't this isn't the Remind DLC? This is the update on the DLC. He's just commenting on the... There's more to it? Yes, exactly. Because E3 gave us a trailer that showed some DLC. Uh, the Remind was supposed to be launched in winter. And Nomura gave a slightly narrow estimization... At the end of the uh, interview, he said that it will take some time, and it they're going to hopefully release it as soon as possible. It, it's also saying that you will be able to play as Aqua, Riku, and Roxas. Um, this is actually kind of getting me hyped. I was not really... I didn't really care about this DLC at all. I wasn't even really planning on playing it, but this sounds pretty cool if you're going to be able to play as more characters. If you're going um, to get all these new boss fights... It sounds pretty cool. It does sound pretty awesome. Uh, it's it's one of those things where I don't think they disappointed. At least they're not. They're just giving us more chances to enjoy the game in different ways, and they're not trying to just be like, "Hey, buy this DLC so that we can, you know, get some more money from you." So I think this is a good thing. I'm glad we got this update. Thank you, Dual Shockers, for that. No! All right, next up, we have an article coming from Kotaku. It seems that the new Auto Chess game is already surpassing Artifact. Its highest ever player count is already triple that that valve, valve that Artifact's ever was. As sad as that is, it's not surprising. People had a lot of problems with Artifact. That apparently, I don't even remember this, but I didn't know that you couldn't get your had to buy the cards, mm -hmm. but I really, I, I really like the fact that you could buy singles and you could actually make money on the cards that you sold. But the fact that I, I do understand that people, you know, the fact that you couldn't get the packs for free. That being said, I mean, if you want to play Hearthstone, you have to spend hundreds of thousands or thousands of dollars sure. to keep up with it. For the little bit I did play Artifact, I think I spent three dollars. If that, and I got a meta deck. Yeah, I think you can you can probably buy every card on there for like twenty bucks now. Yeah, maybe we should buy all the cards and then you know just be God if, if the game ever comes back. I like that idea. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So, but Auto Chess, on the other hand, has been exploding. Auto Chess, according to a lot of people, is kind of the new battle royale. Um, I don't know if it'll ever be that popular because battle royale is a little easier to understand than chess. You know, so I didn't play the Steam version of Auto Chess, but I played a game called Auto Chess on my Android phone. Ah, and the ice machine. It was the ice makes machine. Makes ice. That's right. Uh, and I enjoyed it. It was fun. So I might have to try this one out on the the actual uh, Auto Chess game. So I downloaded uh, it onto uh, my computer last night. I did not play it. It is called Dota Underlords. The original um, Auto Chess was a Dota. To mod, so it makes sense that they would use that. And obviously, Valve is gonna probably, uh, in like Jordan said, you can get uh, the Dota uh, or the uh, excuse me, um, Auto Chess on your phone. And I think that there's a, also a version you can download to your computer. But uh, from what I can, from what I've heard and what I can tell, Dota Auto Underlords is gonna be more friendly, especially to English speakers, because last time I checked, um, the Auto Chess on your PC, a lot of it's in Chinese and. Yeah, stuff like that, and I'm sure Valve obviously has a lot of um, experience with not just making games, but UI and balancing stuff. Yes, yeah, so some of the that's kind of what turned me off from the and the Android one. A lot of it was in Chinese, uh, and obviously it's not that hard. You know, level up these units, place this unit down, yada yada, sort of a thing. Uh, but after a while, I was like, eh, I I think I'd enjoy playing this more on my PC. So 
Yeah, uh, Underlords, which uh, went into open beta just a few days ago, has hit a player count of at least 179,019 concurrent players, which is almost three times as many as Artifacts, which I think was around 60,000. A That's... lot of people are also comparing this to what Artifacts should have been because this is it is a very strategic game. Yeah, poor Artifact. It was... I had such high praises for it. I wanted it to be good. I had a lot of high hopes. And they, they said that they're going to kind of go away and they're going to retool it. I would like for them to add a bunch of stuff but also keep a bunch of stuff. Exactly. I liked Artifact. It was cool to play. Uh, and you know, like Brian said, maybe we'll just go get all the cards for super cheap and become gods. Yeah, I mean, this could kind of be, if they do this right, What? why, does, why, does, why are our... Uh, uh, appliances? Uh, our, yes, appliances. I can't say the word appliances. Going off at once. Because we live in a Decepticon and it's angry. It need it requires blood sacrifice. That's what those sounds I hear at night are. Yeah. Yeah. Our Decepticon requires a blood sacrifice. Fair enough. So. Um, but maybe if they could, if, if this continues on the track that it is, and maybe if they can get Artifact up, Valve can kind of have a new Golden Age maybe, almost. Maybe. All right. You know, Valve's doing been doing a lot of good things. And then, like I said, you know they're going to release Portal Two, Portal Three, Half Life Three, and Left 4 Dead Three. So that's you know obviously, holy crap! <laughs> then they can use all that money to make Artifact better. Oh yeah, boom. That's right. And that's it for the news, boys and girls, ladies and gents, and grandmas. So we appreciate you listening. Let's uh let's save you some money. So oh, also I want to say that they're uh on this same um line of thinking. There is a League of Legends version of this game uh, called... Let's see if I can find it real quick. That sounds it's, cool. Yeah. Um, it is called... I can't think. Where is it? Where is it? Hold on. Are you looking forward to? Team, ta- team Fight Tactics. Yeah. Team Fight Tactics. So go check that out if you're interested in that as well. I do like League of Legends characters. Those are cool. So, in the deals section, you know we like telling you what you can get for your monies. So, uh... Game Pass games. You can get Resident Evil Revelations for Xbox One. You can also get Rare Replay for Xbox One. Also, now that this is a thing, the PC Game Pass can get you Torment Tides of Numerian on June 27th, as well as Goat Simulator on June 27th. Are people still playing Goat Simulator? Apparently, people still playing Goat Simulator, Farming Simulator, and whatever the other simulator games are, so they enjoy them. So, you can also get Goat Simulator for Xbox One as well so and we already covered the uh playstation plus games for the there's month a, there's there's sales going on though for I, uh the playstation is having a sale right now yes check that out if you got a playstation ps3 ps4 or a vita check out those sales you can get a lot of cool stuff for cheap i assume and also if uh steam summer sales should be happening pretty soon hopefully yeah they never did announce that 100 percent did they i th- i have a feeling it's probably going to happen this weekend that that's what I, that's my that's my feeling, so be on lookout for that. Obviously, we will tweet about it if we remember, and we'll definitely cover it on the podcast. If also uh, one more thing, if you are interested in the upcoming Dragon Ball uh, Kakarot RPG, um, there's a big long IGN article that I would recommend. Um, I don't want to spend minutes upon minutes, you know, going through everything, but it it sounds pretty interesting. It's kind of like the um, it's kind of like the George R. R. Martin thing we talked about earlier. It's similar in length. It's not quite as long, but I didn't find it until we're halfway through the podcast, so I can't really read it right now. But, yeah, I did want to, did want to recommend that. Awesome. Thank you. As always, thank you, Alicia, for the art, and Healy Brothers for the music. If you want to follow and keep up with the podcast, you're more than welcome to on Twitter, at Podcast. You can follow me on Twitter, at Aswaylock. You can follow Ryan on Twitter, at Ryan Divisions. You can also... Just keep up with us on Discord. You can join our Discord. You can join our Patreon. You can also join our Reddit group if you want to. But you don't have to do any of those things. I'm not a part of any of those things. That's true. Ryan's not. It's just me. <laughs> I'm by myself. So if you're going to come keep me company, you're more than welcome to. Uh, also, there might be some changes coming to the show, but we'll let you know if we... Maybe, just... maybe not. We have really no idea, honestly. That's true. But just know that you will probably more than likely hear our voices next week. Hey, Jordan. What do you call the father of Full House when he's dabbing? I don't know what. What? What what do you call him? You've ruined the joke. Was I supposed to know the answer? No. 
Bob Swaggett. <laughs> Bob Swaggett. Stay safe and play on.